In the previous video clip, we discussed the flows of funds through the lifetime of a bond. And we refer to the fact that the bond can also trade in the secondary market at many times before the maturity date. Now, in this video clip, we are going to look when, at, at when the bond trades in the secondary market and when it trades cum interest specifically. Now, we're going to explain to you what cum interest means as well. Right, so let's see what we have here. We have the fact that this bond, bond A, is sold on 15 April 2015 to bank, by bank A to company B. So it belonged to bank A, it's sold to company B, and it's sold at a clean price. And you're going to understand later on what a clean price means of 102,5 rand per cent. So it's sold at a premium. And we also say to you that the bond register closes one month before the coupon payment date. Right. Now, if we put the 15th of April 2015 on this schedule, it's going to be fall somewhere here in the middle. So let's put 15 April 2015. That is the date at which the bond trades in the secondary market. So this is the transaction date. Right. We say that it trades at a clean price of 102 rand per cent. Now, when this bond belonged to Bank A, who sold it, on the 31st of December 2014, Bank A received the coupon of 50,000 rand for this bond, the coupon that is paid twice a year. On 30 June 2015, that is the next coupon payment date, this bond is going to belong to company B, so company B will then receive the full coupon. Right. But you must remember that the government and the different companies that issue bonds issue thousands of bonds. So they have to know whom to pay this, these coupon amounts to when the coupon payment dates come. We call this the coupon payment dates. So in order to make sure that they have all the information about whom should receive the coupons, they have a bond register. And in that bond register will be information about who owns the bond, um, what the bank account numbers are, and that will enable the issuer to pay the coupons to the correct persons. But you can imagine that this collecting this information takes some time. You can't collect that information on the 30th of June and then also do the payments on the 30th of June. So what they do is they close the bond register one month before the coupon payment date. So one month before 30 June would be on 30 May 2015. There will be a register closing date. Register closing date. So whoever this bond belongs to on City May, that person's name and detail is going to go into the bond register and that person or company is going to receive the full coupon on the coupon payment date 30 June. Right, so therefore it's very important when the bond is sold to consider who is going to get the coupon 
and for what period that person or company should receive the coupon. So let's look at this transaction, which takes place on 15 April. From 31st December until the transaction date, 15 April 2015, there are 105 days. And from 15 April until the 30th of June, the next coupon payment date, so for that full period, there are 70 six days. So now we have to ask certain questions. The first question we have to ask is, who does the bond belong to on the register closing date? Now this bond was sold by Bank B to Company, by Bank A, sorry, to Company B on 15 April. So on 15 April, it went to Company B. So who will it belong to from 15 April? And until it is sold again, it's going to belong to Company B, which for this transaction is the buyer. And it belonged from the previous coupon payment date until the transaction date to Bank A, which for this transaction is the seller. Right, so let's answer this question. Who does the bond belong to on the register closing date? And as you can see, the bond on the register closing date belongs to Company B. So who will receive the full coupon on the coupon payment date? Because it belongs to Company B, it will be Company B. Right. But did it belong to Company B for the full coupon period from 31st December until 30th of June? No, it did not. It belonged to Bank A from the previous coupon payment date until 15th of April. So for this period, Bank A is entitled to the coupon for that period. So Bank A should be refunded for that period. So who should be refunded? Bank A. And for which period should Bank A be refunded? Bank A should be refunded for the 105 days from the 31st of December 2014 until the 15th of April 2015. Now how will this happen? Remember, Company B is going to receive the full coupon on 30 June. It's going to, the bond is going to belong to them. So in order to compensate the seller, Bank A, we add accrued interest. Now, accrued interest would be the interest, the coupon, for this period, 405 days. Two, we add it to the clean price. In other words, to calculate the real price at which this bond is going to trade, which we also call the all-in price. Sometimes they call it the dirty price. It is the clean price plus the accrued interest.
and therefore we say that this bond trades cum interest. We add the accrued interest to the clean price. Right, so let's do the calculations. We can see that the first thing you have to calculate, because we're going to calculate the all-in price, we have to calculate the clean price, we have to calculate the accrued interest, then we have to add those two together to, to determine the all-in price. So let's first calculate the accrued interest. If we go to our formula sheet, we can see accrued interest is the coupon rate per annum times D divided by 365. And to calculate the accrued interest amount, which we want to do now, it is the principal times the coupon rate per annum times D divided by 365. So in order to calculate the accrued interest amount, we say it's principal times coupon rate per annum. I'm just going to write coupon rate times D, which now refers to the number of days for which you are calculating the accrued interest, 105 days, divided by 365. The principal is a million. The coupon rate is 10%, 0, 0,1 times D, we said is this 105 days that we're calculating accrued interest for, 105 divided by 365. So if we do that calculation from the back, 105 divided by 365 times 0.1 times 1 million, that gives you... 28,767 rand and 12 cent. Now we want to calculate, we've calculated the accrued interest, we want to calculate the clean price. Now the clean price would simply be the price times the principal. So it is 102,5 rand percent, which is the same as 1,025. 102,5 divided by 100 will give you 1,025 times the principal, which is a million. So if you do that calculation, a million times 1.025, that gives you 1,025,000 rand, which is the clean price. Now we want to calculate the all in price and you can see on the formula sheet the all in price when the bond trades come interest is the clean price plus accrued interest we know this one trades come interest so it's all in price is clean price plus accrued interest So the clean price is 1,025,000 and the accrued interest is 28,767 rand and 12 cent. And if you add those two together, 
one million twenty five thousand plus twenty eight thousand seven hundred and sixty seven rand and twelve cents that gives you the all in price of one million fifty three thousand seven hundred and sixty seven rand and twelve cent so in order to calculate the all in price you first have to determine whether this bond is going to trade x interest or cum interest then you have to determine the period for which accrued interest has to be calculated you have to calculate the accrued interest you have to calculate the clean price and then you have to add the accrued interest to the clean price to determine the all-in price.